What is the mission of men right now? What do men really need to be paying attention to in their calling as men? I think what I'd want to stress is, um, for, for, first of all, a distinction. And this was this was shared with me oh, second or third hand that someone had made this distinction somewhere. But do I want to be a man or do I want to be a guy? Right. So when you think of guy, right, he, he's out with the fellas, he's kind of doing his own thing and all that stuff. And that's, of course, there's time and place to be out with your friends. But it, it kind of has that sense of irresponsibility and just kind of doing whatever the whim of the moment and all that stuff. But to be a man, not a guy, be a man. Um, I think of fidelity to duty, fidelity to the other, fidelity to your commitments, and to do so unwaveringly and with strength um, and with respect for the other. We need people to, we need everyone, we need everyone to recognize that um, we all have responsibilities towards the other. And if a man enters into a relationship with a woman and ends up married with the woman, there's a, there is a, a first duty there, fundamental respect for the other. Never to see the other as object, as commodity, but as person, as, as individual subject with whom I'm being called to relationship. And what is my responsibility towards this other individual? What is my duty? Um, what, what virtues am I being called to exercise, you know, within this relationship or within any relationship that I find myself the, of, of strength, of goodness, respect, and so on, these things. So it's that, it's that sense of fidelity to the other and to my responsibility that, that is coming to my mind right now is particularly important. As our culture, broadly speaking, is infested with this radical individualism. And I am my own moral compass. I determine what I want and I am ruled only by my individual willfulness or my desires. And when that enters into relationships, uh, Wife or with children, I mean that's that's poison, right? That does, that destroys the relationship, and it it destroys us from within if we if we buy into that. So that I guess is instinctively, and I'm sort of talking this out as I think in response to your question, but um, to realize that I do have duty towards others, and to live that out responsibly and faithfully. That's what we need. Why does the world need men? Why does the world need fathers right now? It seems to me that over the last little while there has arisen, in answer to your question, um, this idea that, you know, maybe we don't need men. Maybe we don't need fathers. There seems to be this sense of a dispensability, if I can put it that way, of men or of a, of a man in a, in a family relationship. Sometimes it it can seem as if the, the father just always seems to be kind of de denigrated or, or something. He's kind of like the, the silly add-on, you know, in a, whatever the, the term is. But it, it, it just seems that maybe we're not convinced as a culture, or at least the messaging that's getting out there in popular cultures, that maybe we really don't need men or fathers. Um, but we do. And, and where I would locate that need, I think where the church locates it, is in the complementarity of the sexes. Um, we've said this from the outset, that God has created the human being, male and female. And we see the complementarity in the, in the design of the body even, even there, right? So God himself has made man for woman and woman for man. And if we start to say that either of those is not necessary... Um, then actually we're, we're questioning the wisdom and the providence of God in the very way that we have been fashioned. Um, I think also we would know 
the answer to the question experientially, if in my life, uh, to, to stick with the, with the man and with the father, if the father was absent, if somehow that wasn't part of my growing up, uh, when he would go, uh, if I go back to that, that concept of the original wound uh, through the, for example, through absence, uh, then, then I think we would instinctively become aware over time that, yeah, I sure could have used a dad. And so we, there's the instinctive natural awareness of the need for a mother and a father uh, in our lives. And we, we understand that um, from the very fact of the way that we have been created, designed by God. Um, the, the catechism puts it beautifully that the, the call to marriage, the call to that mutual complementarity of the sexes, man and woman in the, in the sacrament of matrimony, is written into the very constitution of the human being. And so we can expect that if that's not there, that complementary, that mutual presence, um, we're going to feel it uh, one way or the other. And so I think the need, and to go back to your specific question, the need for men and for the father is, is verified just in the pain that's experienced from the absence. So why then did Mary and Jesus need Joseph? Presumably Mary could have carried Jesus and done it herself. And yet we have St. Joseph here who doesn't get quoted in scripture, right? And maybe that could be seen as, well, he wasn't that important, but clearly he's incredibly important to the mm. Catholic church, mm -hmm. right? To the entire Christian well, faith. And to the Holy family so, in virtue of the fact that God determined that Joseph needed to be part of this equation. But why? Right? To be that custos, to be the protector, to be the guide, right? Um, Jesus, in, in his human dimension, you know, growing up, was gifted by his Heavenly Father's own determination and out of his Heavenly Father's love with an earthly father as he also had uh, an earthly mother. Uh, the, the child's development is, is enhanced. It, it's helped. It's it's. It's carried forward when the child is able to relate both to mother and to father. And I hear that word custodian that you mm -hmm. keep returning to when it comes to St. Joseph. Safety. That's another way of referring to someone who is a custodian. You're the one who keeps that thing safe, right? Yep. And there really is, it strikes me that perhaps right now, particularly in society, we don't need violence, but what we do need is spiritual warriors. We need men who are protecting and keeping society safe yep. in, a, in a special way that men are able to offer. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you found it helpful along your, your journey of faith. Please know that I'm praying for you. And if you would be so kind as to pray for us also. Every blessing to you. God bless. <laughs>